had interactions on the street where I was embarrassing them so much that, you know, they just, they ignore me. They turn their attention away and they just start speaking louder because they have no argument for the things that I point out. I got my uh, Hebrew, Greek, English, you know, Bible right here. That's a good thing to have. Um, I'm going to use uh, mostly King James Version because that, you know, just in case a black Hebrew Israelite happens to stumble across this video, um, that's the only thing that they respect. We'll use some living Bible as well. But if you read both versions, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. They went So they went to Geno Jennings Church. Geno Jennings, Pastor Geno Jennings, he's a bold man. I, I love Pastor Geno Jennings. I don't agree with everything he says, but man, he be bringing people in there and debating them. And let me tell you something. They, they were like, oh, he don't want to debate us. Man, he ain't about to waste his time. Like most people know that the doctrine is silly. And then it really comes from a hurt place. You know, so many in general being displaced that it's an identity crisis. So the devil comes with doctrines of devils. Let's, let's go. Let's start with Deuteronomy 28, 68. This is one of the big verses that they use, the transatlantic um slave industry and the lord shall bring thee into egypt again with ships by the way thereof i spoke unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwoman and no man shall buy you so the irony of them using this verse right away at the end they don't really pay attention to this it says no man shall buy you so they believe that you know when the uh, african slaves were sold and brought on ships that is what this verse is talking about but it clearly says no man shall buy you when slaves clearly were being bought and being sold all over the world you see how easy it was to just really debunk that so they try to take the the verse and make it mean what they want to mean for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit, and not in the letter, who praise is not of man, but of God. Galatians 3.28, they hate when I bring that verse up. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus, all right? And so watch this, and if ye are Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, all right? So Abraham received, by the way, Abraham, who wasn't even really a Jew, he was a Gentile, and we're going to break that down uh, in a little bit with uh, some Bible. But watch this. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. Deuteronomy 23, 7. You bring that verse up, they're going to ignore it. All right? Now, here's another thing. Oh, we, we follow the law. Well, we're clear in the New Testament that the law cannot save us. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So even if you say, man, I keep all the law, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. James 2.10 says, for whoever says keep the whole law and yet offend at one point is guilty of it all. So guilty of it all. So the law cannot save you so if these cats really think they don't need grace and they just following the whole law and they have no sin in their life well obviously they're struggling with pride the bible says god resisted the proud how's being saved in the bible and they say oh no 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 cornelius was a black man it literally says he was a roman so you're saying that in the bible it was the jews were black the roman soldiers who invaded and had them in bondage were black and so black people killed the black messiah Right. That's that's pretty much what what their argument will be. Uh, and then. you, All right. So even then we see a mixture of Gentiles and Jews because there was no Jewish nation when Abraham was around. He was a Gentile who through him, the Jewish nation was birthed. And then throughout scripture, we see there is a mixture of Jews and Gentiles. So then we can argue, well, who really are the Jews? And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, you fellow believers of this truth, even you few sisters that I'll mention from time to time that's supporting the truth. Okay, and mainly shallow warm to the elect wherever you may be. So, anyway, before I get started, it's a lot to go into where well, I'm going to hit points after points and just kind of roll through it with scriptures. But um, 
you know, these Christians, what haven't they thrown at us? Now, as a part in there, I remember when he talked about uh, Cornelius being an Italian. And that's how destroyed we are, man. If you know your history and you know the past and you understand that we have some history before the 1600s as so-called black people, then you can see the light. Then you will be able to see all they've ever told you. And this is a, a, a construct of the school system, you know. But anyway, I'm not going to go into that. I just want to go and touch on all the things he said. First things first, I'm going to try to keep it or I may not. Maybe all over the place because I'm trying to tackle a, a five different things at once. But he went to Deuteronomy 28 and 68, which we went over this time and time again. I'm going to read it. He said, we only like the KJV. Nope. You'll find that we read different sources too. Different uh, translations to bring it home as well. I, I love going into the old translations. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, this, this is the Bible 1382 the Lord shall lead thee a yin by ships in Egypt by the way of which he said unto thee thou there that thou should have no more see it thou should have uh, shall be sold or sealed to thine enemies into servitus and handmaidus and none noon shall be that shall deliver thee. And this is the dangers of, sometime the blue letter goes off, this is the dangers of translations, right? And then as you, like a rumor that goes on, as it goes on down, things change. Now they said it, no, that you would try to offer yourselves up. So it, it kind of start twisting when scholars start taking and they start changing and changing and changing. So we kind of go back to the, even the source before King James, which King James was just the authorized translator, right? And then by then, you'll see English words start meaning more. And in 2022, you have what you call an urban dictionary. So we clearly see here, as the translations went on, it says, no man shall buy you. And they put it in B-U-Y, but it was actually B-Y-E. And translations after this, meaning no man will be beside you that was a shortened for by was beside you which means no man shall save thee and even if you go into the blue letter it says that no man shall deliver thee so i don't know where he gets it from and i, I guarantee it's from other translations this guy hates us i mean maybe he hates himself but you would think the most horrific event of slavery to ever happen on the planet it would be biblical although that they says they say uh, a hurricane that wipes out a city is biblical. But a nation that gets wiped out, carried across the waters, and all these torturous things done to them and lose a heritage, but for some reason, that's not biblical. It's because those white teachers teach them that, that uh, so-called Christian, that British Israelism, that goddamn Christian nationalism, that we were Canaanites, and the list goes on. I'm not going to go into that. But let's go to... Uh, Deuteronomy. I just wanted to clear that up first. Um, I don't even know what I'm going to go first. I went to Deuteronomy 28. And I'm trying to see what he says next. In the video. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Well, let's see what this says. Deuteronomy 23 and 7. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. For he is thy brother. Thou shalt not, not abhor an Egyptian. Because thou... Uh, was the stranger in, in thy land. So we're going to go into this. And you know we've heard all of this. You know what I'm saying. We we get those debates. And those people come up. Those Christians come up. And I kind of like going into stuff like this. It just in my spirit to do. Um, and then going to the. As Apostle to Harbord out. I even now go more so. Into the commentaries. You can get something out of them. Anyway, thou shalt not hoard Edomite. So when you look at um, Edomite in that term, it's H-130. And H-130, where are we at? So now we Edomite. H-130, it says Edomi, right? Patriarch H-123. 
it says C H seven twenty six an Edomite. So we go to H seven twenty six. Let's see if we can find that. It says here Aromi or Syrian. Okay. It says Aromi, a clerical error for H one thirty, an Edomite. So we could clearly see when we go back. This is easy, but we went over this many years ago, right? A few years ago. So thou shalt not whore, abhor Assyrian, right? That's what it should be. It should not be Edomite. Clearly says a clerical error. And then it says, for he is, he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian. And you got Israelites to get stumped on this stuff, man. This is why we say we had the 100% truth. You literally have Israelites who get stumped on that. They'll sit there with said Netta, and he'll say, you're not supportive of abhorring an Egyptian. Right, so let's go to Leviticus. Just why you got to go precept to precept. Leviticus 19.34. I just had brought this out at camp when one of them black only Israelites came up. Uh, but the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you. And ye shall love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So it clearly says, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Moses was considered an Egyptian, or his son Gershom was named Stranger. We can go on and on about the, um, well, let's go here to Paul now. I think he went to Paul, Apostle Paul, or did he go to Cornelius, or something like that. Um, he went to Cornelius being uh, an Italian, and that's what I'm talking about. Cornelius was an Italian. Well, when you look it up, Caesarea was actually in Israel. Let's go to um, Acts. Let's go to Acts 21 and 39. But Paul said, I am indeed a Jew, a man of Tarsus of Sicilia. Sicilia. A citizen of no, no insignificant city. Right? So what you had here in this time, the people who needed to be saved was the Israelites who had lost their identity. Right? Hellenized. As you read Galatians 6 and 1, it talks about the, the uh, Grecians. Uh, the word Grecian just means Hellenistic Jew. In fact, you can even go, when it talked about the Seraphonician woman, who was Greek, but Seraphonician, the Canaan, right? So why is all those titles? So you really can't look at somebody because they say they was from a particular place, born their nationality, and say, okay, this is their nationality, right? The uh, uh, Caleb's, Caleb's father, Jephune, I believe, was the, the Kenizzite, right? And ever you see Jephune, the Kenizzite, such and such, the this, Simon the Zealot, because you had um, provinces and procreators, curators, and certain things that were set up, and you had people in different provinces under, you know, different jurisdictions, and was calling themselves other different names, you know? So you really can't just go and say, just because Cornelius was an Italian, or saying he was Italian doesn't mean he was a white man and that's what racism has done anything before the 1600s we were just nobody but everybody who claimed and stole all that history and land named the lands after themselves as the scripture says has took on the identity of these places a lot of these places they took names from Israelites they took ideologies and practices even the Greeks certain things from Israelites, right? So you can clearly see, look what the the uh, the Romans did, uh, not the Romans, the Greeks, when they went down into Egypt. Guess what? They took on the practices of the Egyptians. And you had them calling themselves Egyptians. You would have had white people in Egypt calling themselves Egyptians. But Ptolemy and the, the lineage of them, uh, even the Cleopatra or whatever, they declared themselves the pharaohs of Egypt. You can look this stuff up. 
And this is why people got it confused with this uh, this history, and they'll put uh, everybody up as looking black. Now, true in Egypt, you had so-called mixing, but you can't sit up there and just rule out that we were in Egypt as black so-called black people, man, as Israelites. Anyway, I want to jump on to this next one that was a little kind of crazy. He said Abraham wasn't an Israelite. So let's go to, wasn't being called, but let's go to, um, let's debunk that real quick. Hebrews, Hebrews, Ephesians 3 and 9. Uh, I'm going to go to 3 and 8. I'm going to try to make this quick. I'm just trying to get through this quick. 3 and 8, but these hit points. Unto me, whom as less than, least than all the saints, this is in Ephesus, is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, Yahabashah, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world have been hid in Yahweh, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So wait a minute. Did the one you call Jesus have a lineage? Yahweh Shah. We, you gotta, we, gotta, we don't like saying Jesus, but Yahweh Shah, but for you don't know. Did Yahweh Shah, the one you call Jesus, have a lineage? Let's see. Hebrews 13 and 8. Right? Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's see if he had a lineage. Hebrews 7 and 14. Right? This is talking about the one you call Jesus, Yahweh Shah. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake of nothing concerning priesthood. So clearly, out of, which was no immaculate conception. So clearly, through Joseph, his lineage, it, it speaks of, uh, David, uh, Solomon, who he was. But when you go on down here, it said it's evident that he sprang out of Judah. But you see from the beginning, he created, it says, from the which the world was created by all things, the one you call Jesus. So his lineage was set from the Father from the beginning. And all the Israelites' lineages was set because you already had the oral law. You already had a law. And in the law, we lost and went off. All you got to do is read the Bible. You'll see that the Israelites kept going off. And Moses had to bring the law. And out of that lineage came the, um, uh, furthermore, came the Israelites. That was just a different name, man. But we were still, we still were who we were from day one. From day one, this is who we were. Right? That's why I said in um, Genesis 7, 17 and 17, in Isaac, uh, um, Abraham, when he had Isaac and Ishmael, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now, I'm not going to go into details on this, but I just wanted to hit the point. Now, lastly, I want to get into the law. No, and that's the reason why our people are destroyed because you got these Christians saying you ain't got to keep the law. Now, the law is not going to fully save us, but you're supposed to follow the first commandment to love the Lord with all your heart, your strength, and your soul, your spirit, basically. How are you doing that? And you, you're just saying, well, he said I don't have to do it. That's like children, obedient children, <clears throat> when you leave the house because they have come from some foster home so they don't know really what's going on and you teach them the best of your ability and they try they it, but if they sit up there and say well you know we could just throw popcorn everywhere we could eat cake every day right we don't have to clean up a damn thing well you ain't trying and that's the problem let's go to uh let's go to um First John 3 and 4, For whosoever commit of sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So when you go here to Romans 3.27, where is boasting? Is it excluded by what law? Of works? Nay, but the law of faith. True. Right? And if you have faith, you would do what needed to be done by the law to the best of your ability. Therefore, we conclude 
And they're right on that. You can't just keep the whole law, man. There's a lot of guys who are going to be claiming to have fringes of keeping the law in the, in the hour of temptation going forward, man. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law, right? Is he the God of the Jews only? He, is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, Israelites. Seeing is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? Yahweh forbid, yea, we establish the law. And this is the dangers of the Christianity and the Christian uh, sect of, you know, destroying the so-called blacks and Native Americans, man. They've destroyed the world with this religion. So now people, they get their wedding vows. They go in this tomb of a church. They don't give a damn. They, they're looking at other men's wives and say, okay, I can sin. Just like they was doing in ancient times, sinning and making sacrifices. This is all they're doing. They're sinning. And they go to church on Sunday to make the sacrifice. All to go back out and sin again. Man, this is madness. Christianity is dead. And nobody's, people, some people are going to wake up, but it's really all for the elect. That's all I have on that, Shalom.